thanks for coming and welcome to the, the second uh, LMFL Educational Robotics Workshop. Um, before starting, uh, why do we do a robotics workshop in a music course? Well, this can seem like a crazy idea, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, two years ago, actually, yes, two years ago, uh, when I went to pick up rock at the LMFL uh, music course, I was talking to Aplet and uh, she asked me what I was doing. So this is my fifth year teaching educational robotics in, in Spain. And she told me, why don't you do it at LMFL? So at the beginning it seemed a little bit, uh, you know, at least uh, strange. <laughs> but if you think about it, uh, there's many uh, people that uh, have uh, like um, um, a musical mind, uh, which is also mathematical and uh, chess. So there's the same uh, type of intelligence. Uh, there's many other people that are very good musicians that, are, that may have different types of minds. But there is a lot of students that are very good at math and music. So the course is especially useful for this, uh, for this kind of uh, uh, students as well as for any other student. And uh, you know, I, I was hesitating of whether I show you showing you different images before we start, so as you understand better what's in the back of uh, educational robotics. Uh, but the idea is that to, to promote creative thinkers. So, um, okay. So, how are we educating? Uh, those were the classrooms. Uh, more than 100 years ago. So the concept of the classroom wa was invented during the Industrial Revolution just to make uh, you know, workers uh, to work very well on very specific tasks. Right? This went to the schools and even to universities. So this model of teaching in school has, has never changed, even in university. So it hasn't changed yet. In fact, uh, those are the new classrooms, right? And uh, just imagine how these pupils, uh, uh, they, they're not able to see the blackboard, right? Because of the screens, uh, hide the blackboard. You can have some more fancier, fancier uh, um, spaces, but at the end, the, the concept of the classroom, you know, uh, has not changed at all. In fact, there are cases that are really, you know, <laughs> Dramatic, like the one over there. Right. So there is two people that um, started talking, like around 15 years ago, even more, about uh, new tools and new challenges to to, to teach and uh, to learn. And on the left uh, is Nicolas Negroponte, who was the the past uh, director of the MIT's Media Lab. And on the right is Mitch Resnick, uh, who is uh, who works. Uh, at the Media Lab and very closely uh, uh, with uh, Le the Lego group. And they talk, uh, and this was an interview, and you can find that interview in, in, in YouTube, in the Dylan Rattigan show, in, I think it was January 2011. And it's very interesting because it's a very short interview and they speak about this new way of learning. And what they say is that uh, 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 we have to recover uh, the kindergarten, what they call the spiral approach to learning. So basically what they say is, is it's very important to create uh, creative thinkers and to uh, make students uh, more passionate towards technology and uh, mathematics and uh, to give them challenges so as they uh, work, um, so as they are not basically bored and they learn faster. So this is what they call this spiral approach. Uh, they say, you imagine, you create, you play, you share what you've done, you reflect on that, and then you start imagining creating. So they, this is the spiral, the learning spiral. And what they say is that this model has to be applied everywhere, even at university. In fact, there is companies like uh, Google uh, that they have playing rooms, and they have their technicians, when they, when they have to make a project, they, uh, they um, technicians get together, and they, they play different games just um, you know, to think about different projects. So, uh, what are the goals? So the idea is to promote the sport of the mind and uh, 
um, um, Mitch Resnick, the person on the right in the image uh, before, uh, his um, uh, teacher was uh, Seymour Papert, um, a quite famous linguist. He is also working, or was working, at the MIT Media Lab. And uh, uh, one thing he says, uh, Papert, in his uh, Mindstorms uh, book, uh, he wrote it uh, 15 years ago, uh, which is debugging, which is the, the act of depriating a computer program, is the essence of intellectual activity. So here there's an example of, of how you can uh, mix uh, different disciplines, in this case music, those were eight robots that were, uh, that were, uh, were built uh, for the RoboCup uh, Junior, and um, uh, the team uh, won uh, two prizes at um, uh, last year's um, uh, international world competition. Uh, they got the uh, best world team in the use of sensors and best uh, super team. The teams, the last day of the competition, they are teamed in super teams. Uh, and they were teamed with, um, uh, I think it was a Singapore team and an Australian team. And in less than 24 hours, they have to reprogram all the robots. Uh, they have to um, uh, build new robots and um, uh, choose a different music and build a new choreography. So here you see four robots playing, uh, playing uh, uh, four xylophones. Uh, then one robot playing the percussion with two maracas, one tambourine and one uh, bell and three robots playing the piano, uh, two playing the white notes and one the, the black notes. So and the, this started uh, being like a, like, a, like a class exercise. Uh, the exercise was um, how to build um, a program that can be read by a musician. And here you have the program, uh, it uses a graphical interface, and they will explain you a little bit more in detail the program we use to pr program these robots. And here you have uh, the, the, the musical note on top, and underneath it's time. Uh, so by actually changing this pattern, you can make new songs. And this is why, in, in, you know, I think it was in three, four hours, they were able to make robots uh, to do a completely different song, and it was, I think it was the first time that the RoboCup Junior, the robots were playing uh, um, the tune themselves. Usually the tune is pre-recorded. Anyway, the idea also is to promote collaboration and that students share their, their own knowledge, um, to make them work in teams. It's very difficult when they are young to make them work in teams and uh, to, make, uh, uh, to make them use uh, mathematics, physics, but in a very um, um, applied environment and very dynamic and that challenges them and they are very interested about, um, um, about it. Uh, so this was in, in Istanbul. Okay, so the idea is to learn by playing and uh, to offer the students uh, a big variety of, of challenges so as everyone can, can find uh, something that they are interested in. Um, it was it's very interesting because like around seven years ago, uh, um, German people made a study uh, about why uh, girls were not interested about technology. And they discovered that it was not because uh, uh, they don't like technology, but uh, because they need some stories underneath. So if you tell a lady, well, we're going to build a, um, a car, they might not be interested. But if you build a story, uh, so there's the whole idea of storytelling uh, underneath. If you build a story, they might be much more interested. And not also, not also girls will be more interested, but also boys will get more interested. It's very funny because sometimes we say, okay, we're going to build a robot. A boy will take the pieces and start, start again. <laughs> start right away. Uh, without knowing what, what to build. So it, for girls it's more difficult. So uh, here for example you see um, one of the challenges which is the soccer where two robots play against two other robots. Uh, the ball has infrareds and the robots follow these infrareds. And here this is the, the rescue challenge. So there is a, like, um, there are like three rooms uh, with different challenges and the robot has to follow a line, um, you know, go over obstacles, uh, climb a ramp, etc. And there is a victim uh, on top. And what's very, very important uh, is that uh, the students have to explain their work uh, to a jury. And the jury has to judge 
uh, whether uh, the work has really been done by the students uh, and um, it's a, uh, for me, in my opinion, is the best, uh, it, it, uh, as important as building the robots and programming the robots is to be able to explain what you've done. That's really a big challenge. For them, it's double big because uh, English is not their, their mother language, so their mother tongue, so it's, it's, it's uh, double complicated. And uh, it's the first time uh, neither Cora, neither Stepan, uh, they have never programmed before. Uh, they are extremely young and uh, they, they've done an, an, an amazing work. So, okay, so what, what we'll do? Uh, so what we'll do is, the first thing is they will explain you how to make a simple program, just to teach you uh, two or three concepts, so as you understand better what they've done uh, after. And then they will show you uh, what they've done in the final course exercise. By the way, uh, the first, uh, you have to realize that the course they've done uh, at the beginning is a course which is supposed to be done during one year. They've done that in uh, eight days because the last, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, we rushed a lot, but they, they, they did extremely well. So, uh, you know, um, the, the course is very intensive. And uh, uh, I always um, um, use the five days, uh, four or five uh, last days, to build a course exercise. <coughs> and that's a very good opportunity they have to use all the, the knowledge they, 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 they have acquired in a new uh, challenge that we designed with them. Right? So uh, they will explain that final exercise. We'll see a small video that will put the context uh, and then they will describe the, uh, uh, the challenge, they'll explain the robots, and at the end, they'll make a demonstration. Okay? So, Stefan. Uh, 